James, uh, CXTV, uh, we've become very intimate with a lot of cameras of late. We we're have. Using, we use Panasonic P2 yep. cameras in our portable rig, and in fact, you're watching us all on now. Uh, this little baby. Yeah, this is the new one. This is um, the HMC 41E, and this is introduced at a lower price point uh, than the P2 stuff. Um, it, it's cheaper to actually buy the camera to start with, and it's cheaper to run it on the basis that you've got an SD card slot. It records to SD card. As opposed to a P2 cards this big and we're paying some hundreds of dollars. Yeah. I think $600 for a 64 gig, yeah, wasn't they're, it? Yeah, thereabouts. Um, this, is, this is a much sort of smaller camera. The image sensor, I think, is a little bit smaller. It's still a 3 mm sensor. It's still got a Leica lens. It's a 12 times lens. Okay, where's the XLR inputs? Okay, the XLR inputs, it's a great question. What we see here is this little XLR adapter cover and that sits on top of this little 8 pin mini connector. There is an adapter you right. need to get oh, uh, yeah. if you want to plug XLRs in. That said, it does so have... That, that's a proprietary adapter. So It, the, it is proprietary adapter. The cost of the adapter will be more than the camera if I can think back to another Japanese camera manufacturer who were charging $1,000 for a lead. Wow. Um, but assuming that it's reasonably yeah, priced, yeah, which look, I'm assuming sure it it's reasonably be. priced, I, I think that'd be all right. Um, Does that mean we can plug two XLR, like two separate audio sources, in the way we do with our P2 cameras? Yep. How that works is there's a little mounting points on top. Uh, there's an adapter which screws in and basically sort of hangs in this position here. And you plug your lines in. You've got gain controls. Okay. So all why, the stuff you'd why are we lugging around the P2 when we could be using this? Well, because this didn't exist when we got the P2s. Now, this also does record in a different format. It records in the AV cam mode. Ah. Um, where this gets interesting, um, probably the only real downside to this is what we can do on the P2s is if I decide I don't want to spend buckets and buckets of disk space storing the files, yeah. I can record in DV mode. Yeah. This will only do um, HD modes. Oh, so I see. You are yeah, kind of fixed to HD. HD. This is one of the great myths of our time. Pretty well every corporate gig, uh, HD screens and cameras are mandatory. When you're shooting stuff for the web like us, guess what? We're not HD here today. No. That said, if we wanted to be, we could do it on our cameras. Um, this camera has a number of different outputs. It's got HDMI, uh, it's got USB so you can do file transfer. Um, and it's also got somewhere, I know I found it. Yeah, it's got AV and component output. Now but all no, of these- No SDI. No SDI. Um, you, can, you can convert HDMI or component into SDI. Mm. Um, so you can get sort of an HD signal out of it. If you want to get just your component or composite signal out, you do need a special adapter cable. Um, and I think, look, most users who are going to want to do that kind of thing are going to use it as sort of a locked off Lectin camera or something like that. Mm. Where, this, where this is really good is it's a cheap camera, but it gives you a few really important things if you're doing iMag. One of the worst iMag gigs I ever had was in a venue on the harbour with a lectin, and right behind the lectin, big open windows going mm. out onto the harbour on a bright sunny day. Ooh. What do you think the auto iris in the camera is going to do when it sees all that light? It's going to flip. It's going to flip out. It's going to close. Yeah. And that's going to mean that your face on the lectin is pretty much just a silhouette, indistinguishable. Probably a good feature for me. <laughs> Maybe. I've got a good face for radio. <laughs> you get a great face for radio. Yeah. But where this is good is you can actually put the iris into a manual mode. Um, and that means that you can then go and adjust your picture based on what your actual right. subject material is rather so, than just the average of what the lens is seeing. Summary, are we, are we prosumer or are we AV? Um, look, I think, it's, I think it's a little bit of both. I, I'd probably say it's sort of more AV. But mm. look, it, this, this, for the price, you know, this is probably going to find a little bit of popularity um, in, I don't know, maybe even like the indie film market. Because it, it's got a couple of other good little features. There's a shutter, so if you have problems with LED flicker, you can switch a shutter in mm. and, um, and sort that out. Um, it tells you how much battery you've got left. It's got a touch screen. It makes those stupid bling noises when you navigate the Ooh. menu. Don't you hate Thankfully, that? I do. That's why I went in and first thing I did was found the menu option. You can Disable turn it off. the stupid... You can, boom you can turn off the beep noise. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's got some pretty serious features, you know. It's got, it's got bar generator built in. Uh, and I love the fact that you can, you can run it um, with several of the features in sort of manual mode. You know, you can have manual focus. 
You can flip that ring to control zoom or iris as well. Um, there's a separate little wheel for the iris. Uh, it's a problem we've seen on some other cameras, even if you've got a manual iris mode, there's not necessarily a dedicated control for it. So that's really good hmm. in my books. There's, look, there's a lot to like about this little camera, and for the price, I think it's, um, I think it's a bit of a winner. Wacko the Chook.